Hand hygiene is one of the most important ways to prevent infections, especially in the hospital where we have immunocompromised patients. So my expectations are to wash in and wash out, uh, first and foremost. So every time you enter a patient's room, you wash your hands, and every time you exit a patient's room, you wash your hands. Also, you need to be able to feel comfortable in telling one another, hey, you forgot to wash your hands, and then that person reciprocating that and saying, yes, thanks, I did forget, and, and just remind the other person, and I don't want any ill feelings, just normal, yep, I forgot, let me get this into my routine. Once we get it into our routine, it'll become just like putting on your seatbelt when you get into a car, and that's what the way I want it to feel for our associates, just an automatic, you walk in, you wash your hands, you walk out, you wash your hands. We have a barcode system in place. Um, every order, whether it's received by a piece of paper or the, the more uh, reliable electronic order entry systems that we have in place, um, the pharmacist then takes that and he enters it into the computer system. Once that's done, um, the, the nurse then takes it out of the automated dispensing cabinets and she administers it to the patient with that same barcode system that we've been using. When we first started barcoding, one nurse stopped me and she said, um, I will always scan my drugs and I will always scan my patients now. Because last night I walked into the room and I was about to give the medications to the wrong patient. Had I not scanned that patient's barcode on the wrist, I would have given these meds to the wrong patient. What we found was a lot of our stretchers were too, too high for patients to get off from. So we, they would have to get on a step stool or they would try to get out of bed by themselves, which could cause patient falls. So what we needed to do was find stretchers that could lower closer to the ground so people can actually reach their feet there. So we've started every year getting five new stretchers at a time. But another patient safety issue with that is they have scales on them and bed alarms. Some of them have bed alarms. Uh, so we're able to get the patient's weight in kilograms, which is a big plus for our medications that we order in the ER because everything is dosed on kilograms. You know, it alarms if a patient tries to get off the bed so we can set them so the nurses know they're pretty loud um, and, and monitor patient safety that way. In the laboratory, certainly the quickest way that we could harm a patient is by giving them a wrong blood type. So blood bank is a very, very highly regula regulated department. Not only do we follow the, the processes for positive patient ID that we do on all other laboratory tests, we actually are required to have another level. It includes a, another hospital label or armband label on the bottom of the form and some unique identifier numbers. We also label the patient with that armband, so they now have two armbands, usually one on each wrist. We go through the comparison of all the critical data, put all of that ID information onto the blood bank tube at the bedside, along with the phlebotomist, initials, date and time of drawing it, and then we bring that down to the blood bank. What we do in food service to keep patients safe is all about the food code law. Our food is delivered. We have a primary vendor and it's a approved vendor and everything is inspected. Then the non-perishables go away. They're up off the floor. Um, they're down from the ceiling, the fire um, sprinkler heads and um, those cans are also inspected. Any dented can gets pulled from the shelf. We have such a dedicated engaged staff in the kitchen. Every day they come to work. They're mindful of patient safety. They care about our patients deeply. Um, they treat them like it's their own family member upstairs and uh, it's re really reflected in those um, unannounced inspections by the health inspector. One of the issues that um, our nurses brought up was we have a, a board that we do circumcisions on and it was just it's just a flat board and we have a little tray that the baby is positioned on and the nurses felt like wait a minute, this isn't safe, this could slide off. There was no way to secure the little tray to the board. And so 
they brought it to me. We called up engineering. They said, come up and take a look at this and see what you can do. Well, we can put some little stops on that. Within hours, we had that fixed. Now the tray sits securely on that little board and we don't have to worry about the baby sliding off. And it's a trust that our patients and families have. When they come to our organization, they trust us to give them excellent care, but also to be able to render that care in a safe environment. We have an environment of what we call the environment of care that really is designed to protect the well-being of the patients in our ICUs, in our floors, in our surgery departments and so forth because mo many of those patients aren't able to care for themselves. So security's role in the environment of care is to provide for those patients through rounding, through checks, through processes and so forth, an environment that is secure. From the minute staff, patients and visitors enter the campus um, and in through the building and into their care environment, security's responsibilities to make sure that those patients basically are secure in that environment. And the vi those that visit them are secure in their environments. And, and our staff, for that matter, are secure in those environments by the rounding efforts, by the checks on um, unlocked doors and locked doors, by the amount of work they do with looking at the cameras and the monitors in our parking lots. So all of the work that they do basically set, you know, creates an environment in our parking areas and inside our buildings that is secure. Well, probably one of my biggest passions has been for a long time the safety of patients as it relates to patient falls. Patients that are based on their assessment of being at a high risk for falls have yellow slippers on. So if I happen to be a staff member in administration like I am and see a patient in the hallway with yellow slippers, I'm in tune to their uh, potential fall risk. When our staff round purposefully on our patients on a routine basis every hour, that it builds a trust with the patient and so it helps to reduce falls and pressure ulcers and those types of occurrences in the hospital. So part of purpose rounding has us look at the environment to make sure that the items that the patients need are in reach and that the environment is safe, that the bed is locked and it's in its lowest position and a clear pathway to the bathroom before we leave the room. Because a fall uh, for a patient can be a critical life-changing event if they experience any injury. No matter what you do in this organization, no matter where you work or what you do, you are a part of patient safety and you can help ensure that our patients are cared for safely. If you have any ideas or any concerns at all, I want you to contact me, contact our patient safety officer or your supervisor and make sure your ideas and concerns are heard. And I just want to thank everybody for everything that they're doing to improve our patients' care um, and the safety of the environment.